Do you ever wonder what happens when the police leave? Crime scene cleaners are private companies that handle the cleanup after the police are gone. Spalding Decon is one of the nation's largest cleanup companies handling the aftermath of homicides, suicides, decompositions, hoarding, and much more. These are our stories. The person wasn't found for a couple weeks and the fluids have been sitting in the home for 19 days. Some of his body was leaning against the door during the decomposition process, but it's actually a piece of the skin. Hey guys, Laura here. We are in St. Petersburg, Florida on a uh, decomp. The person um, wasn't found for a couple weeks and the fluids have been sitting in the home for 19 days. So it's a big job because it's ceramic tile and it's in a bathroom in a very confined space. So there's three of us here today and uh, we're going to be doing a lot of demo, uh, but I think we can finish it today. Alright guys, so what I'm doing here is I'm wiping the farthest bio spot that I see that I indicated. As it's coming through, what I don't want is when, when I'm when I when I'm working my way up and we're moving around this general area, I don't want to spread it on my feet, I don't want to spread it on my body, and spread it other places and make it more work for us and you know other things like that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna wipe and I'm gonna clear up to the biggest spot that I can see. That way we have an area of movement here. Yeah. You know, kind of build yeah. it, talk through it. Um, it's going to be off. Just got to get through that chunk. Yeah. Okay. You always the have to clean your way from the outside in. So that's why we're starting here to try to get around to the bathroom. 104 degrees with the uh, humidity. And then you got this. So, if you're looking for a good weight loss plan, this is it. All right, I'm unscrewing this door. I'm taking the door off because if you look at the bottom, right? So, you kind of wicked up some of that blood and bodily fluid into the door, into the wood there. So, what we got here on the door is. Uh, Obviously you can see where some of his body was leaning against the door during the decomposition process. So some of the skin was stuck to the door. It looked like the wood and the paint and the enamel was peeling from the door, but it's actually a piece of the skin. As the body decomposes, the fat starts to separate, the bile starts separating. All that thing happens, right? So you can see here where there was a piece of fabric or cloth here where it's soaked up into uh, the rug and it, it trapped it under there. So as I peel this rug up, you can see it's very wet. What that is, is that is, that is fat. Liquefied fat, basically. Most thermostats, they say the temperature on it. This one says, you're standing at the gates of hell. Run! Run! <laughs> this is, hey, people that work together stay together. This is how you make a fucking panic right here. Yeah, this should be good. Okay. 
So now what we're going to do is start cutting the carpet back, chipping up the tile, and wiping down the walls. They're plaster walls, so they're not drywall, which is easier to clean, but harder to remove if we have to. So what I'm doing now is I'm removing this, so I'm going to pull this toilet up and pull the toilet so that way we can access any bile that ran underneath um, the toilet bowl and get the tile out that's behind and around the toilet because it's a little tight to fit the tile chipper in there. I, turned, I made sure the water was turned off at the wall to uh, the water supply and then what I'm going to do is I flush the toilet once or twice, make sure all the, most of the water's out uh, and then unhook your water cable from the back and then now all there is under these caps on the side of your toilet there's two bolts right here and screws. You take those off, the toilet lifts right up, no problem. When you get the stuff out, then we can bolt the toilet back, back down onto the sub floor after we're done. What this is, is at some point he popped and there's spatter on the wall that we'll have to get. It's gonna pop and that gas is gonna release and it comes out with some force, so that's what happens. What this is on the wall here, is what it is a lot of is from flies so the flies are landing on the body they're landing um, in the in the fluid and all that stuff they're eating it up they give it to the they, they do it for nutrients so they can lay maggots maggots are eating it moving around so that's what this is it's just little drippings and just debris from the flies and the maggots landing on the body and then flying around and spreading it everywhere So we just unscrewed the toilet and so now we got to lift it up. Unfortunately, some of the biomatter got underneath the toilet and into the tile underneath. So the toilet has to come out. Um, I don't think we're going to have to get rid of it. So we're just going to take it up, take the tile out from it, make sure it's clean. And at the end of the day, we're going to put it right back. We have some sort of growth from the sewer here, from the sewage mixed with the water causing some type of I don't know, fungus growth, but it looks like branches. We'll be right back after this message. Hey everyone, Laura here with Spalding Decon. We are so happy to announce that on September 1st, we are going to have our first merch drop. The designs are going to be released in the coming days. In honor of that, we would like to pick one lucky winner to receive an exclusive package with all of our new merchandise and other bonus prizes like a one-on-one -on -one Zoom call with me. So click the link in our bio to enter. The winner will be announced on September 1st, which is also the day that you can get our new designs. We thank you again for your support on our YouTube channel. None of this would have been possible without you. Good luck. So all the tile is gone. Nathan's uh, dealing with the toilet right now. So now what we're gonna do is start removing the door frames that have obviously had a lot of fluid on them. And then after that, we're just going to start testing the grout in certain areas to see if we need to go further.
we started cutting up carpet because the bio had like leaked from the hallway into this room. And the more carpet we cut, we saw the farther that it leaked into. So far right now, we've cut a pretty good three by three square out of the carpet. But now we've gotten to the closet and found that it's also run down into there. So I'm gonna have to cut all the carpet out. Might have to move this dresser to get into it. But there is a good thick layer of fat or grease underneath the carpet, which means that he has been leaking for quite some time. Yeah, it's so much lighter. slippery on the ground. You can see that it, uh, the body fluids went through the asbestos tile and this house is pretty old so it's just kind of crumbling. Um, because our job is emergency based we don't have to stop and then get asbestos testing first. Um, we can't leave the body fluids there so we're just going to clean this. We're not doing any type of um, build back or putting flooring back in here or anything like that. sneaking suspicion that we're gonna have to go that way too because that tack strip was really wet. Yeah. So I think we'll just be cut. doing now is we removed all the biohazard, we removed the tile, removed that asbestos tile under the carpet for that amount, um, we treated the subfloor, um, make sure we indicated afterwards to make sure there is no presence of biohazard left. There's not, so now what we do is we seal the floor in for any odors, anything that may be there, uh, then we just kill. So that's what I'm doing now, I'm using a kills paint primer, which is a great sealant. And I'm going to seal these floors in everywhere that I saw biohazard and everywhere that I pulled flooring up. Yeah. Well, I'm cleaning equipment now that our job's pretty much over. Got to make sure we get all the uh, biohazard that we put into our brush out of our brush now. So I'm just going through and I clean everything with shockwave. If it's got some bigger material in it, I hit it with a hose to make sure everything gets cleaned out before we even put it on our truck because it doesn't make sense to take the, the stuff that we just cleaned and put it in with all of our other clean equipment. So, yeah, just kind of make sure we get everything rinsed off before we get it back on the truck and then we can head on out of here. Hey guys, we're at the end of this job and it was uh, it was challenging. It was tight quarters and extremely hot. There's no air conditioning. 
Uh, it's about 104 with the heat index here today, so um, it was pretty challenging, but uh, I think we're good to go. We've put some uh, ozone in there now to get rid of all the ancillary odor, and uh, it should be good for the family to come back in in 48 hours. So uh, thanks for watching. Thanks for watching, guys. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and ring that bell to be notified of the next episode. For more information, visit any of our locations.